Last week, Google censored a personal file stored on an individual's Google Drive account. Now, that particular file was a PowerPoint slide which contained whistleblower information from a Pfizer employee. Very political topic, but the question remains, why exactly did Google, who is not Pfizer, censor a file on an individual's Google Drive account? Why was it done? How was it done? What does that mean for other people storing private information on their Google Drive account? Just random documents, work documents, whistleblower documents. This raises a great number of questions. I reported on this originally last week. In the time since, I've been reaching out to contacts at Google and Google parent company Alphabet, trying to get more information on this, trying to get to the bottom of what exactly happened here. What are the mechanics of how how this censorship took place? Uh, are, there, are there safeguards in place to keep other files from being censored? What was the real logistics? W were, was Google asked by Pfizer to censor these documents? These are pieces of information that we really need to know. I'm going to read a little bit of last week's article to you now so that you have all of the details. And then I've got some additional uh, things I'd like to talk about here. On May 8th, 2024, a corporate whistleblower by the name of Melissa McCatty uploaded a 40-slide PowerPoint file to her Google Drive. That, and again, this is a personal Google Drive, not a corporate one. That PowerPoint slide deck named PfizerTestimony.pptx contained documentation and emails from her time working for Pfizer. Over the days that follow, Mrs. McCatty shared this file with some others. 15 days later, after the initially uploading that file, on May 23rd, Google sent an email to Mrs. McAtee letting her know that Google had determined the file, quote, contained content that may violate Google's dangerous and illegal activities policy, and that some features related to this file may have been restricted. In the case, they were restricted. Basically, the file was, was removed. She couldn't share it. She couldn't modify it. it, was, it was, she didn't have access to it anymore. Uh, here's actually a screenshot of the email that she received which she so wonderfully provided to us. Um, now, here's the question. What exactly is the Google Drive dangerous and illegal policy, right? What, what is that? Well, it's just one paragraph. This is really fascinating to me because it literally is just one paragraph. I provide a link in the article, which you can go read for yourself. But here it is in its entirety. Do not use this product, meaning Google Drive, to engage in illegal activities or to promote activities, goods, services, or information that cause serious and immediate harm to people or animals. While we permit general information for educational, documentary, scientific, or artistic purposes about this content, we draw the line when the content directly facilitates harm or encourages illegal activity. We will take appropriate action if we are notified of unlawful activities which may include reporting you to the relevant authorities, removing access to some of our products, or disabling your Google account. Okay, all of this begs the question, did this PowerPoint file directly facilitate harm or encourage illegal activity? And the short answer is absolutely not. It, it really did not. Uh, the Lunduk Journal, I reached out to Mrs. McAtee directly to obtain a copy of this file, which she promptly provided. I have the entire thing. I'm going to show part of it to you now. And after careful review, I can definitively say that this file neither facilitates harm nor encourages illegal activity. Let, let, let's take a quick look at this. Um, apologies that it's a little off center, but here is the bulk of it. We're not going to go through the whole thing right now just because it's rather big, but the majority of this PowerPoint slide is emails. It is leaked emails from within Pfizer along with screenshots of public documentation by Pfizer Corporation. Uh, here's one page of it. Uh, here's, uh, let's scroll down here, another page, another page. See, it's, it's just email after email. It's annotated emails from Pfizer over and over and over again. Now, here's the thing. You could make the the claim that these were this is an illegal activity because this was uh, uh, corporate emails that were leaked. However, under the United States federal whistleblower laws, they're not illegal. 
she can publish those. <laughs> she was being a, she was acting as a whistleblower. Now, the company itself, Pfizer, could have a civil case against her because she leaked that material. I think it would be silly for Pfizer to bring a civil case against her because it just v validates the material and would just cause them to have more, sh more lights shined on the material, which clearly Pfizer doesn't want out there. However, there, this is not a crime. She is not committing an illegal federal or state act by publishing whistleblower leaked material here. So clearly it's not illegal activity, which means the only thing left is under this provision is did this material directly facilitate harm? Right. So, so then, okay. So clearly Google thinks that a PowerPoint slide containing emails from a drug company facilitates harm in some way. Now, in what way could it facilitate harm to people or animals as this document, as uh, the Google policy lines out? I, I, I couldn't begin to tell you. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Now, here's the thing. Clearly, any sort of leaked material from Pfizer, right? Company that makes lots of vaccines. And this, and most of these emails were about vaccines and vaccine production and the production labs and all sorts of things. That's going to be a politically charged topic, but that's not illegal. You or me may agree or disagree with the personal politics of the whistleblower in question, but that doesn't make it illegal. Right. It does also doesn't mean it's facilitating harm. It's simply information and you and me and anyone else, whether they agree or disagree with me or you or anyone else can have that information now. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's information. It's not, it's not, the, not, there's nothing that I could see in this PowerPoint slide deck that is pushing for people to have one idea or another. It is email after email after email and who was on said emails and what executives were involved and what was, what statements were made and when, oh my gosh, it's just, it's just one thing after another, right? But it's not, advocating for anything. It is simply saying what happened, what information is there that is being presented by a whistleblower, right? That is not pushing or encouraging harm. That is not an illegal activity, none of that sort of thing. And it's also not Google, right? Like this is, this is the fascinating thing here is, um, this doesn't relate to Google. Google is not Pfizer, right? So Mrs. McAtee was not in violation of any agreement she had with Google when Google censored the files, right? Did Now, did Google receive a request from Pfizer to censor this document? If so, Google is now doing the bidding of censoring not illegal, not violent, not encouraging harm content, just embarrassing content of other mega corporations. Pfizer is a brought in a hundred billion dollars uh, in 2020, right? Uh, they're a mega corporation, over 80,000 employees. Does is Google doing their bidding now? I, I, I don't want to think that. I don't want to think that one mega corporation goes to another mega corporation and says, silence that person, delete the files off of their Google Drive account, to delete their Google Docs, right? I don't want to think that. Now, I'm not saying that Google shouldn't have policies in place that prohibits illegal activities. Of course they should. If there's illegal activities going on on their services, uh, Google Google's going to become liable for them if they know about them and don't put a stop to them. So, of course, they have to. But in this case, there's no illegal activities here. These This material is very, very safely covered by all, all known whistleblower statutes. So there really isn't a reason to be silencing it, to be censoring it. Um, so that begs the question is, why did this happen? And I, have, I have a few thoughts and questions I put in the article, and I haven't gotten answers to any of these. Did Pfizer request or demand the censorship? I reached out to Pfizer. I reached out to Google. I reached out to Alphabet. I, 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 cont I, I asked Ms. McAtee. I, no information. Now, Ms. McAtee was very forthcoming. Um, she, she has no idea. She literally provided me with every tidbit of information she got from Google. And it was, and I presented it to you here now. 
There's nothing. There's no information there. We don't know if Pfizer requested it or not. Now, is there a business relationship between Google and Pfizer that is at play? Now, there's a lot of restrictions over what sort of advertising and marketing relationships that drug and prescription companies like Pfizer's can have with com with marketing companies like Google. And it's very important to remember that Google is primarily a marketing company. Like I know they make a lot of software and services and hardware even, but their bread and butter is running ads, ad campaigns, ad dollars, connecting advertisers with potential ad platforms, that sort of thing. That's how they earn the majority of their money. And so while there are limitations in place on what Pfizer can do with a platform like Google in terms of advertising um, drugs and the like, there still is a relationship there. Does that relationship have any bearing on why this was censored? Um, was this censorship approved because of personal political leadings of the leadership or individuals within Google? I mean, this is a fair question to ask, because when you look at the material, it wasn't illegal, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a crime to, to be publishing this material. It wasn't a crime to have it on the Google Docs, uh, in the Google Drive. It wasn't a crime to, to share it. Uh, it is not a violation. Uh, looking at the wording of Google's policies, it's not a violation of any Google policy that I can find. So... It would suggest that if this wasn't censored <clears throat> for business reasons, perhaps it was censored for political reasons of individuals within Google. Because clearly, I mean, it's a politically charged topic. And I'm not going to go into uh, vaccines or not vaccines or different vaccines. I I'm not going to go into any of that because, honestly, that's outside of my wheelhouse. But what I would like to focus on is the fact that it is a politically charged topic. And clearly, people feel very passionately about it one way or another, did that have any play in Google censoring personal documentation, personal files on a personal Google Drive account? If so, is this happening elsewhere? Is this going to happen elsewhere? Is this the beginning of, 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 of political censorship across Google Drive? I mean, it sounds like a crazy question to ask, but I think it's a fair question to ask because I would like to think that whether I'm storing my files in Dropbox or GitHub or Google Drive or OneDrive or blah, 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 whatever, wherever I'm sticking files, I would like to think that my personal politics and the personal politics of management and uh, executives at the companies that, I, that host those files really aren't coming into play here. I'm storing files. I'm paying you to store files, either directly or by watching your ads. So let's just store the files and be fine with it and be fine with the fact that people are going to disagree with each other. But I don't know. I honestly don't know. I've asked so many individuals and I cannot get a straight answer out of anybody. Or perhaps is this simply a matter of a file scanning, right? an AI system that is auto-censoring the file stored within Google Drive. Now, this, this is a very real possibility here. Is there an algorithm, an AI, a file scanning cron job that went through, found some keywords, right, or the right combination of words or images or file names and said, aha, this has got to be censored because this is encouraging harm to animals or something right right just because of a of a rogue bit of code or a rogue algorithm it just went awry and so this got auto censored is that possible yes yes it absolutely is did it happen i don't i have no idea again all of these questions have been asked of google of multiple people within google google pr teams google engineering teams google executive staff i've i've contacted google every which way there is to contact google which i should point out is not a lot google doesn't let people get a hold of them overly easily there's no phone number you can call that's where like you go to google's website they, they don't list a phone number where you can say okay you want to talk to someone at youtube you call this number, right? That doesn't exist, right? You want to talk to this particular person at, at YouTube? No, 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 no. They don't like that. Now, I luckily, I have a number of contacts that I got roundaboutly, but they don't like being contacted at Google. That's just a thing they don't like. I mean, heck, they used to have points of contact within various Google 
companies like YouTube. If you were a big YouTube channel, they used to have a person assigned to your channel that you could contact via email and set up a, a video chat with, talk about things and work through issues that would come up and the like. They've gotten rid of all of that. Like you're not... You're you're on your own, bud. Uh, Google's gonna gonna do what Google's gonna do, and you don't really have any recourse about it. And they're not even really gonna tell you why they did it. That's just the fact of the matter of dealing with Google, which is rather annoying. So we can make assumptions. I think I have my own personal assumptions about why all of this happened, but it's just assumptions at this point. But it does suggest some problems, right? The files were censored. Files on a personal Google Drive are being censored for reasons other than the stated reasons. Because again, the whole uh, you know violation of the this particular policy was clearly not real, right? So even whether it was a fake AI generated thing or a person actually physically went in and flagged it, that's not honest about the reason. Right. That's not the real reason, because this file did not violate the policy. Uh, there's there's nothing to be done about it. Um, I believe she appealed it. I don't I don't think that went anywhere because it's Google. And that brings up a lot of questions about what we do as individuals. Now, not a lot of us are going to be going out there and being whistleblowers. Right. A lot of us aren't, aren't going to be doing that well, for a variety of reasons, hopefully because most of us aren't in the situation where we need to be whistleblowers because we work at a corporation or an agency that is doing something naughty, right? And so that's not likely going to come up very often. However, every single one of us has an idea or a thought or a religion or a political leanings or something that someone within Google is going to disagree with every single one of us, whether we're left leaning or right leaning or centrist or up or down or forward or back or this religion or that. Religion. We're going to have at least one idea that, a, that one of the managers or executives in Google is going to just really dislike for sure. Every single one of us, every single one. Therefore, we all need to be a little concerned about what gets censored. So if you put those ideas into a Google Doc, well, that's now on your Google Drive. Is that going to get censored? Is that going to be automatically flagged by whatever AI flagged this one? Is it going to be an issue if you share it with people, which is something you're allowed to do with Google Drive? Well, maybe because if Google disagrees with it, if someone at Google thinks, I don't like what this person's saying, which seems like it's probably the case here, your file goes away. You're not allowed to have those thoughts anymore. This is a problem. I, this is one of the big reasons that I, I don't advocate for people using big tech services. And, and I do, and you do, and I, I think most of us do to one degree or another, still have some reliance on these big tech services. But it, increasingly, I'm seeing concerns about using them because so many, so many times over the last many years, we've talked about theoretical concerns, right? Like, okay, am I going to get kicked off just for having the wrong idea? Oh, that's preposterous. You're just going to get removed or censored if you do something illegal, right? Well, now we have at least this example right here of a person not being censored for illegal activity, not for dangerous activity but just probably for wrong think. Yeah, we really need a response from Google on this one. And if you're, before many of you ask this, I made a point of showing a large portion of this PowerPoint slide deck here in this video. If you're watching the audio version, you're missing out on all the slides. But I'm, I'm making a point of showing these emails, even though I'm not talking about them, in the video, which I will then publish to YouTube. Now, why am I doing that? I would like to see if there is an AI algorithm, because these emails are all screenshots. If there's an AI algorithm that goes through, finds the words that it finds on the screen and censors based on the words on the screen. Now, again, these words are not illegal. There's nothing illegal going on here. 
Nothing at all. I can publish this. The whistleblower can publish this. YouTube and Google can host this without any illegal, with any legality ramifications. Now, if Pfizer would like to bring a civil case against the whistleblower, they can. In theory, they can bring a civil case against me as well. They won't because they would be laughed out of court, but they in theory could. But that is the case for anything, for someone um, a sharing a video clip of them playing a game of Super Mario Brothers or, or using a little bit of an audio from, uh, from a podcast inside of a YouTube video. There's a lot of reasons someone could have civil legal actions against someone uploading a video to YouTube, which I will do with this video. But they're almost always ridiculous. And in this case, there, there, there would be no real case for it. So if this gets censored, this starts to answer a few potential questions. Either it's going to be automatically scanned and verified, or someone within Google is like, no, it is desperate that we not have this information out there. And I would like to see. And so this is a test. I, I don't I don't really mind if Google nukes my YouTube account. I I've been banned off YouTube before. This is this would be my this would be my third round of being uh, slapped on the wrist by YouTube. Eventually, they're just going to delete my YouTube account. But most people don't get my content via YouTube. So whatever, I can use it as a test ground. So here we go. This is published there now. Um, we will see what happens. What do you do in the meantime? Right? What do you do with your documents? Because if they're not safe on Google Drive, where do you put your files to make sure you feel somewhat safe about them? And this is something I think that everyone should be thinking about. And the, the answers are not as simple as you may think. At first glance, you want to say, well, self-host, right? I will host the files myself. So no one's going to come in and censor me. No one's going to just rip my files away, right? However, there's things to consider there. Right. There's a lot of there's security ramifications involved with with making and maintaining your own server. There are potentially a, it, it is much more difficult. You're more likely to get to get hacked into in that case. Um, then again, you're a smaller target. So maybe no one will know about you. Maybe security through obscurity will work there. Um, and you could have hardware failure. You could have all sorts of problems that you experience because you self-host. Now, personally, I recommend self-hosting. I, I like to self-host. I self-host where I can. You'll notice that I, when I publish, I publish all my materials, say, over to locals, lunduke.locals.com. And the reason I do that is because the amount of work required for me to self-host everything that I do with the Lunduke Journal would make it so I wouldn't have time to write articles and do shows. I would just be maintaining my, my hosting apparatus. So I host with another company, which if you are in that boat as well, and I, I'm guessing most of you are, you've got to find companies that you really do trust, right? And not just trust to not censor you, but trust to have good security, trust to have your back, trust to be viable in the long term so they don't just disappear overnight. There's a lot of things to consider. Uh, too much for, for just this video, too much for just this article. This is probably something that needs to be talked about in, in greater depth. Luckily, there are many articles and podcasts and the like that have talked about you know, how to effectively back up your data using a wide variety of systems. If you are a whistleblower, though, or you're publishing anything political or politically charged in any way, which is a lot of people and a lot of documents, Maybe we keep them off of Google Drive for now. Uh, that, that, that's all I want to say on that topic. Uh, thank you to everyone who makes all this possible over at the Lunduke Journal, lunduke.locals.com, lunduke.com. Go on over there, click on some links. You'll love it very much. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tube, <laughs> I really wonder if this video is going to get yanked off of YouTube. I do declare, end broadcast.